Hello everyone and welcome to GDS Tech product training. In today's session, we're gonna go over the intro to IntelliSkin and GDS technology, but also covering very advanced, in-depth information into many of the different facets that go into IntelliSkin and GDS technology. We're gonna talk about everything there is to know about this product line and how these products have evolved over the years. So anyone who is not 100% familiar is highly recommended to participate and view today's session. If you do have any questions that go beyond what we cover here today, please reach out to your department head or account manager for more information. So getting right into it, we're first going to define what is IntelliSkin and what is GDS technology? The best way to really summarize IntelliSkin is the idea that IntelliSkin is a protective case for your device that offers military grade drop protection and integrates an internal charging connector that's built into the IntelliSkin that connects into the charging port of your device and then translates out to rugged docking contacts on the outside of the IntelliSkin that would then connect to any GDS tech products, whether it's a GDS dock or other accessories. But then that gets into the second question of what is GDS technology? Basically, GDS technology is a platform that transforms your device into a reliable and efficient enterprise workstation for on-the-go use. Now, that can be in the form of a docking station, such as a GDS dock. It could be different accessories. We have ergonomic accessories. We have also added peripherals to really create a full ecosystem for your device. Really just different ways of transforming your device into that reliable and efficient enterprise workstation. Now there are many features built into this technology, the first being the pogo pin technology. These are the pogo pins that are built into the GDS docking stations that will connect to the docking contacts of the IntelliSkin. This technology has scalability in the sense that it is cost effective to upgrade your device by integrating modular components when upgrading from one docking station to another. We have what we call the GDS ecosystem, and that's what I mentioned a moment ago, where we have different peripherals and ways of connecting to those peripherals. So your device will immediately connect to all of your other devices the moment it engages with the GDS docking station. The Intelskins have certified drop protection standards and are future-proof themselves, and so you can upgrade from one IntelliSkin to another as you're upgrading your devices, and they will work with the same GDS docks as long as they have the same charging standards. And with the ergonomic attachments, such as the GDS handstand and GDS shoulder strap, which we'll be covering in the future, different ways of really just making this the most cost-effective but high-performance technology for your consumer device. So the best way to have a full understanding of IntelliSkin and GDS is really to look at the evolution of these products to see how IntelliSkin and GDS has evolved over the years. We have enhanced our features and functionality and charger requirements of the docks and features of IntelliSkin as devices have evolved also. And so there may be some products that will appear similar on the surface, but they have some strong differences. Some of them are around today and are still relevant in certain applications, but some newer devices require newer types of docks and so we'll be talking about how these docks have evolved over the years to conform to the newest technology. So looking at the very first IntelliSkin products that were made, these were made for some earlier models of Samsung tablets and phones and as you can see they all integrate a micro USB connector that's basically the connector that was working with all of these devices so they would all have their form fit IntelliSkin that would transfer out to the rugged docking contacts to the outside. So these were the first devices that we had made IntelliSkins for. And then this was the first GDS dock that was made. This is part number RAM GDS dock D1U. This dock is relatively larger than the other newer docks that have been made. It has a micro USB 3.0 port on the back. As you can see by this cable connector here, this is what a micro USB 3.0 looks like. It has the micro USB 2.0 with the extra 1.0 that's added to the side there. So that's that thin wide micro USB cable that you might be familiar with. The overall dimensions of this dock are four and five eighths wide by four and five eighths long by three inches tall. As you can see, it has the pins and dock receiver. The distinctive D shape is what we refer to it. So this one dock could support any of the devices that we were making IntelliSkins for, whether it's your phone or tablet. And so in addition to the first GDS desktop dock, we also came out with our first GDS vehicle dock. Now the way the vehicle docks are designed is they were made to integrate into the existing RAM tab lock system. So the tab lock and tab type, those are universal spring-loaded tablet holders that have universal docking cups that connect to the top and bottom. So to make this a GDS vehicle dock, we essentially made custom cups where the top part of the cup conforms to the outer edges of whatever IntelliSkin that we make. 
and then the bottom docking cup would be a universal docking connector that would have the docking pins to receive the contacts of the IntelliSkin. And so this was a universal charging dock that was built into the vehicle dock portion, and then the top cup would be custom for any particular IntelliSkin. So you can see the part number for the top cup here, RAM-GDS-DOCT-SAM10U. So this was the dock top cup for the SAM10 IntelliSkin. And as you can see, the complete part number for a GDS vehicle dock would be RAM-GDS-DOCL-V2-SAM9U. And so that was the naming convention. Basically, dock L-V2 was the type of vehicle dock that you see here that integrated with the tab lock system. And the part number for the universal vehicle dock portion itself is RAM GDS dock V3BU. And this integrated a micro USB pigtail connector that was connected to the dock with a five pin docking contact. So for the RAM tablet holders, there's a RAM tab lock and also the RAM tab tight. But we only built this into the locking tab lock version because the tab locking mechanism had stronger tension to help ensure that the IntelliSkin's docking contacts were properly engaged with the pins, where the non-locking tab tight could not ensure that guarantee every time. And keeping in mind that these tablets could be used in portrait or landscape mode, the tab lock design was the best way to ensure a constant connection of the docking contacts to the connector pins. And following the design of the RAM tab lock system, this means that you can then connect your vehicle dock to any RAM mounting system. So any RAM double ball and socket mount, whether you're looking to mount this in a vehicle using the vehicle dashboard mount system, or you can have this mounted to your forklift using the forklift clamp mount system, or the vehicle floor mount, which is the RAM pod HD. But really any RAM ball and socket mounting system using the integrated four hole amps hole pattern will connect to the back holes of the RAM tab lock which is actually the RAM GDS vehicle dock. So with this technology, you can mount your tablet with IntelliSkin virtually anywhere and still having it docked with the GDS docking connectors. So once these initial docks were established, we then expanded on the different devices that we were making IntelliSkins for. So we expanded throughout all the different types of Samsung devices. As you can see, we had the 10.1s, Tab 4 7.0. You can see all the different 8-inch, 9.7-inch tablets that were made. And we also developed IntelliSkins for the iPad mini 2nd and 3rd gen at this point. And there was one model of the LG G-Pad F8.0 that was created. Essentially, we were creating IntelliSkins for tablets as we were seeing certain demand for certain tablets coming out. And for any tablet that we were making IntelliSkin for, we would make a corresponding top cup that would allow us to create custom vehicle docking cup systems. So it's somewhat of a form factor between each of these. So for every IntelliSkin tablet that we would make, there would be a corresponding vehicle dock, exactly like what you see here. And then the same goes for phones. We start off with the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S7, but then we expanded into additional models such as the J3, the S8, S8 Plus, and J3 2017, and models continued since then. Now, because these phones are too small for the tab lock system, we had a different type of vehicle dock made for phones, and this was the first vehicle phone dock that was made. You can see the part number here, RAM GDS Dock V1U. This had a micro USB 2.0, pigtail cable coming out of the back of the dock, had a five pin set of contacts there for connecting to the contacts of the IntelliSkin. This had an industry standard two hole amps hole pattern and was just a nice clean spring loaded holder for supporting the phone. So with that spring tension that would hold the phone in place and then would dock onto the pins there. And with that two hole amps hole pattern, you can connect this to any RAM B size ball and socket mounting system. So whether you're drilling into a flat surface or mounting it to the windshield of your vehicle, just like the vehicle dock systems, with this type of technology, you can mount your phone virtually anywhere while having it connected to the GDS technology. Next, we developed our line of GDS Ergo. So these are ergonomic accessories that you can connect to the IntelliSkins, mostly the tablet options because there's enough space on the back of the IntelliSkins for tablets to connect these accessories. So the first one we have here is what's called the GDS Handstand. The GDS Handstand is a two-in-one kickstand and hand strap accessories. You can see you can expand these feet out and prop it up so you can place this on any countertop, desktop surface for convenient viewing, or you can collapse the feet in and then hold it as a hand strap. So it's a two in one, and you can also rotate it between portrait and landscape. So it's a very handy accessory. Many people will choose IntelliSkin specifically for this accessory because it's so ergonomic and so comfortable for the user. 
So one thing to consider is for anyone who is using the GDS handstand with their tablet, that means there's now an added thickness to the back of their tablet, which creates an issue if they're having this mounted in the tab lock system. So our way around this is to create a set of risers. So anyone who's gonna be using the tablet in Teleskin with the GDS handstand and having it docked in a GDS vehicle dock would also have to use these risers that would position between the top cup and the body portion of the RAM tab lock system. So you can see in this middle graphic, this is what the finished product would look like for the Intelliskin with the GDS handstand. And you can see the faded docks. This is the positioning of those spacers there. So you would need those spacers if you were gonna be putting the GDS handstand in a vehicle dock. And there are a couple additional variations of the GDS handstand that are available right now. One is simply a hand strap version. So just a lower cost version of this accessory that does not have the kickstand function. It's simply the hand strap portion. And then we have the magnetic version of the GDS handstand. That's where the strap portion has a built-in magnet that will clip up against any steel or ferromagnetic surface. A couple other GDS Ergo accessories we have here. There is the GDS shoulder strap. This will clip to any of the connector points on the corners of an Intel skin. You'll see little holes on the corners. That's for any connector point for a shoulder strap accessory. And then for phones, we have a smaller GDS wrist lanyard here. That's the GDS STU. Expanding on some accessories for GDS, we had what was called the GDS SnapCon. That's this part number here, RAM GDS AD1U. This is meant to be a quick travel accessory for quick charging of your IntelliSkin if you do not have quick access to a docking station. So without having to remove the device from the IntelliSkin, if you need to charge somewhere else and don't have access to a dock, you can instead use this little travel adapter. So this goes from the connector pins to a USB 2.0 port that would connect out to the provided cable and then you would charge that to your source. So this is a quick and easy way of charging your device if you don't have access to the dock. Again, so that you do not have to remove the Intel skin from the device. So this was the very first GDS SnapCon that was made. There was a second version that came out that integrated the pigtail connector directly to this. Since it's assumed that anyone would be needing that cable automatically, this is a more rugged version. So there's less plugging from a cable to a docking component. So this is the second iteration, RAM GDS AD2U. This has a USB Type-A 2.0 cable, but essentially has the same charging standards, just a more ruggedized version. And you'll see here, we also came out with a platform stand for this. This is just a simple high strength composite base that can receive the GDS SnapCon. This is RAM GDS Dock AD2U. It's a way to simply convert a SnapCon into a dock Again, just modular on-the-go components if you don't have quick and easy access but still want that docking functionality, you can achieve that using these GDS SnapCon components. So here we're looking at the first upgrade type of GDS product that has been made for the GDS desktop dock. So this is the second version of the GDS desktop dock. One common theme that you'll see as we make newer versions of certain products is that we either add new features or we make it more efficient and cost effective, or it's conforming to higher charging standards of certain devices. So different types of upgrades depending on what the specific need is. In this case, the original desktop dock was a little bit bulky for some people, and so we made a more compact version of the dock, and that's what we're looking at here. So the second version of the more compact GDS desktop dock, this is the GDS Dock D2U. This has a micro USB 2.0 port. This is still a very commonly used desktop dock for many devices that will support the micro USB 2.0. This has a little bit of a smaller footprint with a three inch wide by 4.1 inch long by two inches tall. So essentially the same charging standards, not quite the same as the micro USB 3.0, but still sufficient for the devices that it was intended for. And this is also the time where we had developed the first mass charging solutions for GDS. And so we have our GDS four port charger, that's the Dock Dash 4G1PU, and then the six port charging dock, which is RAM GDS Dock 6G1PU. Each of these ports have five volt at two amps per port output. And as you can see, you can mix and match between different IntelliSkin devices. And that's really what's great about this technology is that it's considered universal charging in the sense that it doesn't matter what type of device you have because they all translate out to the same distinctive D shape of the docking contacts on the IntelliSkin. So you can have a mix of three phones, three tablets, or three of one model, three of another, or you can have six completely different models, just like what we're looking at right here. 
but when it's in this mass charging dock, you don't have to worry about individual cables for each one of these. These all come out from one single port and cable coming out from the back of the docking station that then plugs into your wall source. In addition to the four port and six port charging docks, we also came out with the GDS slide dock. That's what we're looking at right here. Now we're not looking at any part numbers yet because we actually came out with newer versions of these recently that we'll be talking about in a later slide with different features and benefits. But essentially this allows for mass charging on a scale where you can select any number of slide docks and configure it into a charging cart or basically any kind of application. You can either drill it down to a flat surface or this comes with a magnetic adapter so you can lock these onto a steel surface and that's what we see on this charge cart right here. You can basically mix and match and you can configure each slide dock by positioning the docking portion on the slotted hole up and down and then it secures in place. So you can configure it to accommodate virtually any IntelliSkin tablet. And these docks do have a red LED light indicator that will detect when it is charging the device. Each of these docks do have a male USB type A connector and so you can route through mass USB port charging to make this as efficient as possible, but you can really just build out any custom mass charging station using these slide docks. So now that the first GDS docking stations have been established, now's a good time to introduce the first cables that were launched with these products. Some of them are included with the docks. So you have the micro USB 3.0 cable. This is the cable that comes with that larger desktop dock. And then for the newer USB 2.0 dock, that's the GDS dock D2U, you have this micro USB 2.0 straight cable. This also comes with the GDS vehicle docks for tablets and also the GDS vehicle phone dock. You also have a 90 degree version of the micro USB 2.0 cable. That's that MUSB 290-1. And then there are three types of chargers that were launched at this time. You have the GDS Charge USB 6. This is a six port USB type A female adapter. This is a great way for adapting the GDS slide docks where each dock has its own USB type A male connector. So routing this into an individual power source is best to use the six port wall charger. And then you have a two port wall charger that's more basic, plugs directly into the wall, two USB type A ports there. And then we have the first GDS CLA adapter or SIG adapter with two USB type A cables there that feature Qualcomm quick charge. What's also very common is this hardwire charger here. This is part number charge V7B1U. This is the newest version of this charger that has replaced previous models, but it's essentially a hardwire charger with the USB type A port that will connect to any of these docking stations. The only iterations that have upgraded over time are slight charging requirements, different input voltage and output voltage ranges, but these are the current power specs that are part of this latest version of our hardwire charger. And for different types of opportunities, we've come out with a couple other hardware chargers. We have this Charge-RS232U that integrates a serial adapter on one end and then also a micro USB male cable coming off of another end. And then we have another type of hardwire charger that has a USB type A port on the side and then also a micro USB male cable coming out of one end. These have been used for specific opportunities and certain use cases where we will develop a unique hardware charger depending on what's needed for a particular application. But for most part, that previous hardware charger we were looking at is the most common. Now here we're looking at the first GDS Tech products that have expanded beyond IntelliSkin but will still work with GDS products and these are modules that were meant to adapt to OtterBox Universe cases. So this first one here, RAM GDS OT1U, this is a module that will click into the accessory adapter of the OtterBox Universe case with a lightning connector that will connect to any lightning port of virtually any iPad that will line up with that case. And then we have a Samsung phone version with the USB Type-C connector that's built into that. As you can see, it simply slides right into the module port of the OtterBox Universe case and will allow you to connect your device with OtterBox Universe into any GDS docking station. In addition to the modules, we have also created other accessories that will attach to the back of the OtterBox Universe case, such as a version of the GDS handstand, and also a ball adapter so you can connect and quick release your OtterBox Universe case from any RAM mounting system. 
Now in this stage of the evolution of Intel Skin and GDS, we started encountering more and more devices coming out with higher charging standards using a USB type C type of connector instead of the micro USB 2.0. And this has led to us creating newer types of products that accommodated these higher charging standards. And that starts off with building out IntelliSkins that integrate the USB type C connector instead of the micro USB. And that's our devices such as what we see here, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3 9.7, Tab A 8.0, Tab Active 2 series, and for their subsequent phone models, the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, and S9. So now because the original micro USB 2.0 desktop dock was not supplying sufficient power to the device as intended, we then came out with a USB type C version of the GDS desktop dock. And that's what we're looking at right here. This is part number RAM GDS dock D2CU. As you can see, this has more pins. You have an 18 pin connector versus the five pin on the original GDS desktop dock. This has USB type C port on the back instead of the micro USB port. And then this particular version of the dock came with the USB type C to type A cable. As you can see, the dock D2CU has a higher output voltage range for supporting those newer devices that have those higher charging standards. And then likewise for the phone vehicle docks, we created a new version of the GDS phone dock. This is part number GDS dock V1CU. Again, this has an 18 pin connector for receiving the USB type C phones with IntelliSkin and then the exact same higher output voltage settings built into these docks as well. At this point, we came up with an upgraded version of the GDS SnapCon, which also accommodated the USB type C. So this was part number RAM GDS AD3CU. Now this SnapCon did have somewhat of a newer design, which makes it not compatible with the desktop stand version that we saw with the original GDS SnapCon, but it hasn't really been a practical enough solution that was worth creating a newer version of that platform base. And so we simply have this new type C version of the GDS SnapCon. And as for the tablets with USB type C, we created a new type of vehicle docking cup at the bottom that would have the 18 pins and USB type C cable connector coming out of the back of the dock. And again, this goes back to the scalability of the GDS docking stations, where as we create new devices and components that have those higher charging standards, you can integrate it into your existing vehicle docks. So again, if you had a previous RAM tab lock system or GDS dock and then upgraded to a new device that happened to have those higher charging standards, you can simply swap out the bottom or top docking cups. So a different top cup, if you're going to a different device with the same charging standards, or if you have a new USB type C device, you would then swap out the bottom docking cup for this version here. And this was part number RAM GDS dock V5BU. And this USB type C version is the one that we were automatically including with the vehicle docks for devices that we knew had those higher USB type C charging standards. So as we were creating new GDS and IntelliSkin products to accommodate these higher charging standards, this is really where we started taking GDS to the next level. And this is where we began expanding on the entire GDS ecosystem, as well as support for Samsung DeX and also power delivery as both an enhancement for peripheral support and also for higher charging requirements and also enhanced care and maintenance to account for these newer, higher standards. So getting into the GDS ecosystem, this is where we started adding peripherals such as the GDS keyboard. As you can see, this is a heavy duty, ruggedized keyboard that comes with two different options. You have the trackpad option, which tends to be more common. That is part number RAM KB2-USB. And then the 10 key version here, RAM KB4-USB. These are both highly rugged and durable. They both feature a backlight keypad with red illumination and have antimicrobial industrial silicone. It's one solid piece, so it's very easy to clean and maintain. And these keyboards do offer both Visa and four hole amps hole patterns. So you can either mount a ball directly to the bottom of these, or they also have rubber foot pads so you can position it flat on any surface. These keyboards do have a long heavy duty coiled cable with a USB type A connector and they are available with holder options. So we have taken the RAM tab lock and RAM tab tight series 
and simply attached docking cups on the top and bottom. So this gives an optional quick release version of the keyboard holder if you like. So instead of having a ball mounted directly to the back or the bottom of the keyboard, you can have it mounted to these holders. So you can have the keyboard mounted and then if you need to transfer from one place to another, you can quickly disconnect. So it's a way of keeping the keyboard secured in any vehicle, but then also the ability to quickly disconnect and transfer from another mounting location. Next in the GDS ecosystem, we have what we call GDS Audio. So we have two versions of heavy duty and high quality speakers. We have the Ram Speak A01, which has a max volume of 93 decibels. And then the Ram Speak A02, that has a max volume of 99 decibels, but also features a push to talk breakout feature. That's the PTT right there. And so we also have these mic brackets that you can adapt between any Ram holder and the mounting components. And so this is what allows you to connect the speaker and have it positioned all off of one mounting point and conveniently positioned right next to your tablet. The mic bracket options are available in two different lengths. You have the standard length here, which is the MIC-1U, and then the longer version here is MIC-2U. Next, we're looking at the GDS Hub, and this is somewhat of a foundational component that makes up the ecosystem, and it's what allows you to connect these additional peripherals. So whether it's our own peripherals, such as the GDS Audio or GDS Keyboard, or any third-party peripherals, this is what really allows you to connect to the GDS docking stations, so that the moment you connect your device to the GDS dock, you're also then immediately connected to your other components here. And so as you can see, you have these available ports. You have three different USB type A female ports, as well as a USB type C port that features power delivery. And this is what's required for issuing power to the hub and then connects to the docking system. You have USB type C male connector. This is the cable coming out. So this is what would connect to the GDS desktop dock. And then you also have an ethernet port on one side, as well as an HDMI connector couple different card readers, so a lot of different ways to connect virtually everything that you need to your tablet the moment you connect to the GDS ecosystem. And so this GDS hub is considered somewhat of a desktop or light series version of the hub, where we also have a heavy duty series that we call the GDS Tough Hub. Now it's very similar as far as the functionality. It does not have any card reader options, but it does have mounting hole patterns, so you can have it secured virtually in any vehicle. So it has more of a rugged casing, suited for any rugged environments. You have a total of four USB type A ports. You have your HDMI connector, the same USB type C female port for power delivery, for issuing power to the device and to the hub. And then the same USB type C male connector that would go to the docking station that you have. And then an ethernet port on the side. Now the GDS Tough Hub and GDS Hub are truly what is used for supporting Samsung DeX. Now the way Samsung DeX works, and you can see in this exploded view here, you can go to your different peripherals such as keyboard, printer, or scanner, but you can also connect to a monitor to use Samsung DeX, which is basically a desktop experience going from your mobile device to a monitor. So you're basically creating that desktop experience from your mobile device instead of a full-on computer tower. But in order for this to work, you need to use all the features and functions of the GDS Hub. That includes an HDMI port from the monitor to the hub. If you're gonna be using any other accessories like a keyboard or mouse, then you would have to utilize a cable going from a USB type B port from the monitor to a USB type A port on the hub. And then you would have power delivery going to the hub. And we do have some power delivery charger options. But as you can see with the hub, you can connect to DeX and also connect to any other peripherals that you need. Again, it's simply a matter of connecting your GDS docking station and your IntelliSkin device, the moment you're connected to the dock, you are then immediately connected to all of your other peripherals and also to Samsung DeX. Now Samsung DeX will work with any compatible monitors that have the proper HDMI and other USB connections for going to the hub and to the GDS dock, but we also have our own unique GDS monitor that we call GDS View. So this is a heavy duty monitor that's intended for any rugged industrial or mobile environments. It's a 13.3 inch dual capacitive touchscreen with high vibration tested standards with anti-glare and anti-fingerprint treatment and also an ambient light sensor that can detect the correct brightness levels and also has a night mode option. So it's truly suited for any environments and comes with all the proper connectors if you're going with the HDMI to the hub and then also your charging connector options. And as you can see here, the GDS View has all the available ports that you need. 
You can see all the features and functions. You can pause to view if you need, but you have convenient placement of buttons and menu options so you can configure the monitor exactly as you need and you can mount it to virtually any RAM vehicle mounting system. Now on the subject of GDS ecosystem and connecting peripherals and also for Samsung DeX and the GDS Hub, this gets into the area of power delivery where some of these peripheral options and DEX support does require the charging with a power delivery source. And this is where we have started to expand on our power delivery capabilities and our charging options. And so we've started out with a couple of wall chargers. So we have a single 18 watt power delivery wall charger and then a dual wall charger that has a power delivery USB type C female port and also a USB type A port. And in addition, we also have a SIG or CLA adapter that comes with the optional power delivery USB type C female port, as well as a Qualcomm quick charge USB type A port. And then we had our original hardwire charger with the USB type C male connector, as well as a male to male USB type C USB connector that allows for the transferring of power delivery. So at this time with the enhanced care and maintenance, we have launched the IntelliSkin Contact Brush. That's the part number RAM GDS Brush 01U. This is a Velcro brush adapter that allows you to clean the flat contacts that are on the bottom of the IntelliSkin. So if there's any debris that gets caught between the docking contacts of the IntelliSkin and the GDS docking station that it's being used with, you can use this brush accessory to clear out that debris for a nice clean connection to ensure that you are properly powering your device through the GDS contacts. And you do have an optional adhesive Velcro accessory that does allow you to connect the brush to the back of the Intel skin. So it is a small accessory and you do not want it to get lost easily. And so you do have the option to keep it closely connected to the Intel skin at all times. And part of enhanced care and maintenance also means cable management, which we take very seriously. So now that we have a lot more powered components in the RAM and GDS family, it's important that all of the cable connections are secured properly. And so we have launched this series of cable clamp options that are simply different form factors for adapting to different types of USB connectors, whether it's a micro USB to micro USB, which can also support USB type C to type C. That's the first one, the clamp one U. And then there's the clamp 2U that goes from a USB type A male to type A female. And then there's a rugged aluminum housing version of a USB type C connector, and that's the clamp 3 part number. So they're all RAM GDS CAB clamp 1U, clamp 2U, and clamp 3U. So next up as part of the evolution of IntelliSkin and GDS is the launching of IntelliSkin Next Gen. So as you can see, this looks a little bit different from the previous IntelliSkin models that we were looking at. These have a lot of key features that were launched in just the recent years and accommodating the most recent tablets out there. So looking at these key features, the new IntelliSkin Next Gen features a hard plastic overmold with shock absorbing rubber that's built around this. So it has two different types of materials that are built into this now just to make it a little more rugged. There is also a USB type C port that's built into the bottom of the IntelliSkin next gen with an optional cap that allows you to transfer and cover that port if you're not using it. So this is another alternative to what the GDS SnapCon was offering where if you need a quick connection to your device and you don't have immediate access to a desktop dock or vehicle dock, then you can simply connect your USB type C cable directly inside of the Intel skin and then it, you would be able to power your device properly. You have the same flat pogo pins that are built on the outside. The Intel skin next gen is a little bit thicker and we'll get into the different docks that will support the Intel skin next gen. But the Intel skin next gen also features a unique positioning marker at the top and center, that triangle shape there that offers universal compatibility across any IntelliSkin next gen devices and allows it to work with a universal type of vehicle docking cup and offers more of a secure connection, which we will show in a moment here. As you can see with the vehicle dock, we now have a new type of top cup here. You can see the part number RAM GDS dock T-OMT1U. So this OMT is the new abbreviation for a universal version of these vehicle docks that will support virtually any IntelliSkin next gen. And then you have the different dock variations where one has a USB type C and one has a micro USB. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that it is still very important to have the GDS dock options with the micro USB because some devices do not actually support USB type C or power delivery. It will not recognize the charging source. So it all comes down to the specific make and model of the device that you're using, whether it requires the power delivery or USB type C, or if it requires the 
lower standard micro USB. And so both dock options are allowed here. You can see there's an OMT1U and an OMT2U. And then you can see the corresponding docking cups by themselves are available if just that one piece is needed if you are upgrading your vehicle dock system. So you have the USB Type-C version being the dock-V9BCU and then the micro USB version being the dock-V9BU. As you can see, this is all part of the scalability and future-proof concept of IntelliSkin next gen and with the whole line of GDS technology is that you can interchange the top cups. So if you're going from one device with the original GDS system, you can use the same mounting components, same tab lock design, you get your new IntelliSkin next gen and you get your proper docking cups to support the IntelliSkin next gen. So as I mentioned a moment ago, the IntelliSkin next gen is significantly thicker than the original IntelliSkin. And this does cause some issues regarding compatibility, not just with power requirements, but also with physical fitment inside of docks. So as you can see, part of the new design with this vehicle dock, because we did have a USB Type-C vehicle dock cup before, but because of the added thickness of the IntelliSkin, it would not actually fit inside. So you can see the original V5BU, the distinctive D-shape was flush up against the back portion of the dock cup, whereas with the IntelliSkin Next Gen, this distinctive D-shape receiver was moved forward a bit to account for the added thickness of the IntelliSkin Next Gen. So these are both USB Type-C docking stations. They offer the same type of power requirements. It's just simply a shift in that receiver so that the IntelliSkin Next Gen will properly seat into the vehicle dock. And then a similar concept goes for the GDS desktop docks where the thickness of the decal was interfering with the IntelliSkin Next Gen's newer thickness. And so there's a newer version of the GDS desktop dock that did not come with the decal. And so that's the part number GDS-doc-D2C-NDU. The ND is for no decal. So the reason for that no decal version of the dock is to accommodate the added thickness of IntelliSkin Next Gen but otherwise has the same charging requirements that are met for these newer devices with the USB Type-C connection. And then same goes for the mass charging with the GDS 6 port charging dock. There's a new version to accommodate the IntelliSkin Next Gen that has part number doc-6G1P-NGU. You'll see many part numbers that have a dash NGU for Next Gen. That's referring to IntelliSkin Next Gen. Again, same power capabilities as the original GDS 6 port charging dock, but you can see if you look closely, there's a little more of a gap behind the distinctive G-shaped dock receiver, and that's simply to account for the added thickness of IntelliSkin Next Gen. And now this is where we get back into the GDS slide dock that we were talking about before. So we made a new version of the GDS slide dock that works with both the original and the, with the next gen IntelliSkin here, and you can see the part numbers are now loaded up. You have doc-g7-ngu, and then the magnetic version here is doc-g7m-ngu. Exact same features and functionality. There is simply a redesigning of the receiver piece so that it could accommodate both the original and next gen IntelliSkin. Now, as we developed IntelliSkin Next Gen, we also came out with a series of vehicle docks that offered more of a form factor and a lot more customization to the devices. And this is the launching of GDS Tough Dock and GDS Cool Dock. Now, the way these work is they are similar, but offer a lot more features than the original vehicle dock options, which were truly more universal and modular. These ones are still modular, but have a lot of great enhancements to them. The first noteworthy item is that these docks are pre-assembled. Whereas with the universal vehicle docks, the user does have to assemble all of the components, which is quite time consuming if you're assembling a large quantity of these docks, where we pre-assemble these docks here and they're a lot easier to put together. So they are still modular. People can still piece together components, but it takes a lot less time and it's a lot easier to work with. But these do offer more of a custom form factor. So each body portion of these GDS Tough Docks are designed for each specific IntelliSkin and device. These do offer a built-in cooling fan option, and that's where the GDS Cool Dock comes in. You can see the cooling fan built-in option that's there, or these are available without the fan attached, and that's simply just a receiver hole on the back. Another great added feature with these is the fact that these docks do offer a built-in cavity that allows you to receive both the IntelliSkin Next Gen with the GDS handstand on the back. So if you remember from the previous slide, 
if someone has a GDS handstand connected to their Intel skin, they had to order the extra set of risers that would be positioned between the top and bottom cups of the vehicle dock in order to support the GDS handstand. But these ones simply have a built-in cavity, so it goes right in there. You don't have to reassemble your dock in any way. The GDS Tough Docks are available in both locking and non-locking options. And as you can see, as we have developed power delivery options, we also offer the ability to add peripheral support. So somewhat like the GDS Hub, but now you can build it directly into the vehicle dock itself. You can connect your keyboard, printer, scanner, any other device immediately when you connect into the vehicle dock without the added hub accessories. So it adds a level of efficiency to your GDS ecosystem. And as I mentioned a moment ago, these still have a modular design to them. All of these components are available by themselves. So if someone is upgrading from a locking version to non-locking or upgrading from non-locking to locking, you can see there's a GDS-DOCKHU and a GDS-DOCKLHU. You can order each of the individual Tough Dock bodies by themselves. If you're upgrading your device, you can keep the same dock component or locking component and simply swap out the body portion. You can also order the fan by itself. And these are the same vehicle docks that are used in those newer vehicle docks for the Intelskin Next Gen. Those were the OMT1 and OMT2 part numbers. So these docking cups will integrate directly into this new GDS Tough Dock design. And here we're looking at a recent addition to our line of GDS phone vehicle docks. There was a need for some locking options. And so we simply made both locking and non-locking versions of the GDS phone docks, both available in a micro USB and a USB type C. These are the part numbers GDS dock L-V3U and GDS dock L-V3CU. Exact same charging requirements between the micro USB and the USB type C, simply just a newer type of top cup design with this locking module that you can connect on the back with the tubular key lock, as you can see the key lock design on the top there. These are still universal phone docks, but the way the locking mechanism is configured, it is somewhat configured for each specific phone. And so if you are switching from one phone to another, you would reconfigure the height adjustment capabilities to accommodate the proper phone, as it is a matter of being able to expand the phone enough where the lock prevents you from being able to expand the phone and remove the device. So it is height specific, which means it is somewhat phone model specific as you configure the locking mechanism. Next, we launch a new type of six port charging dock, and that is for phones specifically. That's the part number RAM GDS dock 6G9PU. So as you can see here, this has a little bit of a different design. Uh, same charging capabilities, it's just more built for phones and a better form factor for supporting any phones with an IntelliSkin there. And as you can see, this one has red and green LED lights that indicate if the phone is charging. And just like the original 6-port GDS desktop dock, you can support any mix of different phones. As long as it's in an Intel skin, it will work with this dock. And then another multi-port dock that was created was to be built into cabinet modules, and that's the dock that we're looking at here. It's the part number RAM GDS dock 6G10PU. So again, this is exclusively for any phone with IntelliSkin, but as you can see, this is another type of mass charging where you can integrate multiple cabinet modules into a server rack, just like what's shown in that image there. Again, with red and green LED light indicators to show if the phone is charging. And just like that previous one, you can mix and match between different phone models as long as it's in IntelliSkin with an on-off switch, and you can basically integrate and charge an entire fleet of phones where you have mass charging at the end of the day. So on the subject of power delivery, up to this point, we've been offering power delivery options for supporting peripheral options and Samsung DeX. And it's come to a point where there are newer tablets and devices coming out that had a USB Type-C connector. But now there's a point where these devices specifically require power delivery in order to have sufficient charging. That includes the Samsung Tab S7 Plus, the Tab S7, as well as the fan edition of the Tab S7 and also the Tab A7 Lite 8.7 as well as Apple iPad Pro 11 inch, all generations of the iPad Pro 11, as well as the iPad Air 4 and the iPad mini 6. And so with those, we've had to actually create newer versions where it's important to understand the difference between power delivery and USB type C, because not all USB type C charging applications are necessarily power delivery. Power delivery does require a USB type C to type C on both ends of your connection. And so that does mean with the desktop dock, there was a newer version of this dock that was created. That's the part number GDS dock D2CM-NDU. The D2CM 
indicates a male USB type C connector that's coming out of this version of the dock here. And again, ND is for no decal. So this is for supporting any IntelliSkin next gen due to the added thickness. So we do not have the decal on this dock. But essentially it's the exact same dock, just has the different cable that allows you to support that power delivery because the USB type A type of cable that came with the dock originally, it supports the previous USB type C devices, but does not necessarily support power delivery. So that's an important distinction to make there. And then for the six port charging docking station, because it's not on a USB system, this instead has a different type of dock. It's the part number 6G1PD. This is for power delivery dash NGU. That's for next gen IntelliSkin. Realistically, this could support non next gen IntelliSkins, but the power delivery requirement is very important on this one. And it's important to note that with this power delivery six port charging dock, it will not support devices that do not support power delivery. So again, some devices require power delivery. Some devices will work with or without power delivery. And then there will be some devices that do not work with power delivery docks. That can include iPads with a lightning connector, such as some older iPad models. So it all comes down to the charging requirements of the device. And so as newer devices have come out with different charging requirements, we simply have more of a variety of desktop docks to choose from to accommodate the various requirements. So it's truly as universal as possible, but it's truly also a matter of the nature of the different power and charging requirements that various devices have today. And on the right here, you can see we made another version of the GDS SnapCon that did allow for power delivery. And so again, it's the exact same SnapCon that we had previously. It has a USB Type-C port, but just like this new desktop dock, the SnapCon comes with a USB Type-C to Type-C male to male cable for running that power delivery. So one thing that I had mentioned previously when we're talking about various upgrades and new developments and enhancements of GDS products, sometimes it's a matter of upgrading the power requirements to accommodate higher charging standards, but also we will make upgrades to make things more efficient and more cost effective while still getting the same job done. And now that's what we're looking at in this case here where the new power docking cup in the middle is the latest version that will support power delivery but has a better price point and so it's more efficient. It does not have the same type of power output, but it will still support the power delivery and ultimately at a better price point. This is the Dock-V10 PU. And so this is a version that we consider to be a power only. That's really the best practical difference between these and the other docking options. So looking at these three docking cups in a row here. Now, these are docking cups that can be used in GDS tough docks, cool docks, and also in the universal vehicle dock options for various IntelliSkin next gen devices. The one on the left is the one we've been looking at before, which is the micro USB version. That's the Dock-V9BU. So that simply has a micro USB cable that's coming out of the end there. And then on the right side, we have the USB type C version that we were looking at, which does support power delivery with that USB type C port. That is the Dock-V9BCU but it had a significantly higher price point with an 18 pin dock with an output voltage of five to 20 volts at three amps and also offers data transfer speed of up to five gigabits a second. And so the data transfer speed is still an important factor to consider. It's not necessarily for everybody. If you're connecting the GDS dock to a source that charges and also transfers data, you could transfer data using this type of a dock such as powering it to a computer versus going into a wall charger. If it's strictly going into a power source, then all you would need is the V10 PU version, which is gonna be far more common, especially if this is going into a vehicle. And so this is a much better price point, but still offers that power delivery. And so that's the purpose of this new V10 PU dock is simply a more efficient version of that charging cup. As you can see with USB type C tablets, it has an output of five to 12 volts at three amps. And then for micro USB tablets, it will support five volts at 1.5 amps and has an eight pin dock as opposed to an 18 pin dock of the other USB type C version. So with the micro USB dock, this would be for tablets that are exclusively with the micro USB port that are not power delivery compatible or Apple iPads with a lightning connector, you would be using the micro USB dock version here. 
And then for power delivery, if you're simply looking for power only, this is gonna be your most cost-effective solution here with the newest Dock-V10PU. If you're looking for a power plus a data transfer through the USB Type-C port and connector, then you would be using the V9BCU, which has a higher power output, but also a higher price point. And these are the three vehicle dock part numbers that come with those given docks. So the micro USB one is a dock L-V9-OMT2U. The V10 cup is used in the dock L-V10-OMT1U. And then the V9BCU cup, that is the higher price point with USB Type-C, is dock L-V9-OMT1U. If you have any doubt as to which vehicle dock is best for your tablet make and model, that data will be available on RamMount.com by simply looking up the compatible docks on a given product page. So with the launching of this new V10 docking cup, and because it became much more efficient in terms of a price point and still offering power delivery, this is what opened up the doors for us to expand on these types of docking cups and allow for us to offer docking cups that also had peripheral support. So as you can see the top one here, this is the V10 PDU. So this is for power plus data through a single peripheral. So by data on these ports, we're referring to the ability to connect a third party peripheral, such as a printer, keyboard, scanner, even a USB thumb drive, or even a speaker with the proper USB connector. Anything that has a USB type A male connector will be able to communicate through this cable and communicate with the tablet as long as it's all compatible. So the moment you dock your tablet into the vehicle dock, it's immediately connected to power and also connected to your other peripherals. And so you have the single peripheral as well as dual peripheral support, as you can see here. Next, we have the latest version of the GDS desktop dock that also offers power delivery. This is the GDS-Dock-D7U. This one has been slightly redesigned. It's a little bit larger than the previous D2U dock. And this one, instead of having a port on the back for more durability, you actually have the pigtail cable directly integrated into the dock for this one that terminates out to the USB Type-C mail connector. So with that mail connector, it will support power delivery, but is more efficient in terms of price point. And as you can see, there's a single peripheral port version of this as well. This is the GDS-Dock-D7AU. So just like the vehicle docks where you can connect a peripheral, you can simply connect any USB type A USB peripheral into the side of this dock here. And as you can see in the in-use photo, you can connect a keyboard or a printer. And just like everything else, the moment you dock the tablet onto the desktop dock, you're immediately connected to your peripherals. This would be great for any USB dongles that can be used where you have the dongle connected directly to that USB type A port that could potentially branch out to multiple devices that are all connected to that same dongle. An important note with these new GDS desktop docks is that these will support both the original and the next gen IntelliSkin. So you'll notice that these are shown with a decal. So you no longer need to distinguish between with decal or without decal. You don't need to buy a special version to accommodate one type of IntelliSkin versus another type. This is currently the most universal type of GDS desktop dock that exists right now, and so it is highly efficient in that manner. The only type of device that it will not support currently are devices that do not support power delivery, and that would include lightning connector iPads. So to recap and do a little comparison between these different GDS desktop docks, the two on the top are ones that we were looking at in previous slides. You can see there's the GDS dock D2CMU, this has a USB Type-C mail connector that's plugged into a port. That's a USB Type-C port in that desktop dock, and that is with the decal. And then the only difference between this one and the one on the right is the dash NDU, that is with no decal. So the one on the left will support original IntelliSkin with that decal. And then with the decal removed on the right side, this will support IntelliSkin next gen. But you can see that both of these have a relatively higher price point than the newer version of the GDS Dock D7U. So this will support both original and the next gen IntelliSkin and also has a better price point than the previous two versions of these docks and is more durable with the cable integrated directly into the dock rather than having a port built into the desktop dock. So this is a great way to highlight and really summarize the difference and you can see why this newer dock was developed. All these docks are still available, so certain use cases may still call for a particular dock to be used. But as we develop more GDS products, the idea is to make them more universal and efficient as we go. Next, moving on to the latest hardwire chargers from GDS Tech. 
We have some newer versions of these here to accommodate different types of devices and different types of charging requirements. There's a lot of technical information for each of these, so we won't show them all right here immediately, but we have a new type of USB Type-A charger. There are a couple new hardware chargers to accommodate devices with a DC barrel jack. And there are also a few different types of power delivery hardware chargers. Some even have a single and dual peripheral support, and some are power only. So here's a document that's in the form of two slides right here. Here's the first part that references tables one, two, and three, and you can see tables one, two, three here. But if I go back to this previous slide, so this is a great way to really summarize. Instead of comparing all the different charging specifications for each one, there are really just two factors to consider when selecting the proper hardware charger for your particular use. The first factor is to consider the charging requirements of the device and the dock. So we've been talking about devices that require power delivery, and some devices that require non-power delivery. So it's a matter of the type of device and the type of dock that you're using. As you can see, we will reference the proper table to seek out different chargers that are compatible with that device and dock that you may have. And then the other item to consider is the charging requirements of the vehicle that you're using. So some vehicles will have different voltage ranges. So cars, trucks, and fuel burning forklifts will generally range from 12 to 24 volts but many of these applications are mounted onto electric vehicles or electric forklifts that may have a higher voltage range. So looking at 36 to 48 volts. So different types of voltage ranges will take into account what type of hardware charger you're gonna use, as well as what type of output from the charger that's gonna support the device and dock that you have. And so you can consult each of these tables. You can pause and look over the slide if you need, but as you can see, you can go over the different voltage ranges and also types of power connectors to see what charger is best for your application. So this is a good compatibility reference when building a kit because the steps involve selecting your device, the proper Intel skin, the proper GDS dock, and also the proper charger. Next, we're looking at a new feature that's been built into certain IntelliSkin next-gen models where there is now a built-in LED light that can function as a powerful flashlight. As you can see here, there's a button that's located on the front near the docking contacts of the IntelliSkin. The button is shown green on here, but they're actually black, but they're just marked green so that they can stand out where you see where the location of that button is. But essentially by pressing and holding for approximately one to two seconds, the flashlight will turn on and it's a very powerful flashlight to use in any dark areas as you can see there. So this is currently available in certain IntelliSkin makes and models, including the IntelliSkin Next Gen for Apple iPad Air 4 and the Pro 11 inch. And so this is currently available in select tablet make and models. You can see in the part number with the SAM 63 or with the AP number indicating which device model it's for, the dash NG for next gen, and then dash LED will indicate that it comes with the LED light option. So we're coming up towards the end of today's session, but this is a great new addition to IntelliSkin and GDS technology, and that is the first solutions for handheld PCs. So far, we've developed solutions specifically for the Zebra EC50 and EC55, but we're gearing up to make ourselves compatible with future handheld PC models that we make IntelliSkin and GDS solutions for. So we have a next-gen IntelliSkin, so we consider it next-gen because it still has that hard dual material overmold that's built into this IntelliSkin next-gen design. And then you have a special vehicle GDS dock that will support power delivery with the USB Type-C female port coming out of the end of the cable here. This is thick enough to account for this specific IntelliSkin for the Zebra EC50 and 55, but it will also support future handheld PC IntelliSkins that we come out with. So this is considered a universal handheld PC vehicle dock at this point. And this IntelliSkin for the Zebra device will work with the latest GDS desktop dock. That was the dock-D7U, which also supports power delivery and will also work on the peripheral version of that desktop dock. So these two infographics will do the best job of explaining how you can expand and connect multiple peripherals to your handheld PC by utilizing the docking stations with that peripheral support. So whether it's the desktop dock, you can see that USB type A port on the side will let you connect to a keyboard. So you can use a functional keyboard with the device when it is docked, or you can connect multiple peripherals by using the GDS hub, as you can see above there. And this gives an idea where you can connect your scanner, your hub, speaker, keyboard, essentially anything else that you want to connect to the Zebra device or any other future handheld PC that we'll make an IntelliSkin for. And for vehicle applications, you can see the vehicle dock is here where you can connect this to 
any of the hardwire charger options. As we were looking at the previous slides, there are hardwire charger options that do come with that peripheral support. So with those hardwire chargers, the moment you connect your device to the dock, if it's connected to the charger, you are then immediately connected to your printer and keyboard and any other peripheral. And those are available in a single peripheral or in dual peripheral dock versions. And those are docks that will work in both vehicles, trucks, cars, and also on forklifts. So pretty much any setting that you might want to have this in, you can create your entire ecosystem using GDS technology. So that's going to wrap it up for today's session. We've covered a lot of information, but we've pretty much covered the entire evolution of IntelliSkin and GDS technology up until products that have been launched in the past year. So there's been a lot of information to cover here, a lot of technical information. So if you do have any questions about what types of solutions to recommend for certain applications or how to build out the proper solution, all the info should be available in here, but can still be a little overwhelming. So definitely reach out to your department head or account manager for any confirmation or any additional questions that you may have. But other than that, I want to thank you for joining us in today's product training session, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.